Congratulations, you're in part two, which means you made it past the values and functions, uh, stuff that we learned in part one, uh, simple primitive types, collections, all that stuff. Uh, we're gonna dive into making um, modules and learning about types in Elm. And we're gonna start with modules. And this is good news because it means that we are leaving this crazy Elm REPL setup and we're actually gonna be in a text editor like normal people. Um, so I've got VS Code over here. I'm gonna make myself a little bit smaller so we have some more space to work with. Um, and all I did was I created a blank folder on my computer called Elm-Modules. You can call this whatever you want. Um, but we're just gonna be writing actual Elm code in real text files like actual people. Um, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna right click here, make a new folder uh, called source. And we're gonna start with our first module, kind of picking up where we left off in the last video. Um, we're gonna be uh, making a math module that has add, subtract, and we're gonna be talking about kind of how Elm code is organized and how you can uh, split code into different files, um, regardless of what kind of program you're making. So every um, thing we do in Elm uh, is inside of a module. So add a, b equals a plus b. That's the function that we had from before. Maybe uh, we're kind of growing our math library here and we're saying we also have Subtract a b. I'm going to change the color theme. I think it's a little bit freaky. There we go. That might be a little bit easier to read. Um, so here we have a function add. We've got a function subtract. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to define um, a module here called math to match the name of the file that we see over here in source. And we are going to decide what functions from here should be allowed to be used uh, by other programs. So I'm going to say Let's just say only add is available. What this syntax is doing is it's saying, um, let me zoom in here, and I'm gonna hide this uh, activity bar. Um, what, we're gonna, what we're saying here is we're making a new module, we're gonna call it math, and it's exposing the add function. All right, so anyone that imports math uh, will be able to uh, use math.add, but they will not have access to math.subtract. Maybe that's just used internally later on in the file. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna save this. I'm gonna do control backtick, and that's gonna allow me to uh, have the integrated terminal here. And um, I'm gonna pull up the Elm REPL again. And uh, what the Elm REPL is gonna allow me to do is import my math module. Uh, oops, maybe it won't. Uh, oh, you know what I need to do before I do this? I need to create a new Elm project. Uh, right here. So I'm going to do Elminit, and all Elminit's going to do, now let's take a look at this, is it's going to create an Elm JSON file for us at the root of the folder. So uh, we're going to say yes to doing that. And then what you're going to see is now we've got this Elm JSON file over here. Um, and so Elm JSON, we're going to cover this in depth when we start installing packages, but the important bit is that it's going to have access to where our source directory is. It knows it's an application and it knows we're using Elm version 19, which is what we installed uh, at the beginning in the installation video. Um, so all we're gonna do is we're gonna run Elm REPL. Now we're gonna import math. And uh, Elm stuff is kind of like uh, all the compiled code here that gets generated for us. That's like a git ignored folder we don't have to worry about. But now that we have imported math, we're gonna have access to math.add. And so that's the function that we defined over here. So we made our math module, we exposed add, uh, and now uh, we can we can use it. So we can say math to add 10, 20, boom, it's running our code for us. So from a terminal, we're able to uh, access code that we wrote over here. Uh, if we try to do math.subtract, uh, we're gonna get uh, a problem. And the problem says that the math module does not expose a subtract variable. So we ran math.subtract and it's like, what is that? I don't know what you're talking about. So in order to make subtract available, we're going to have to add it to the exposed values. We can re-import math just so that the REPL knows. I'm going to clear the screen. And now we have access to math.subtract. And what's cool is even though this is a custom module, we're still getting those really helpful error messages. Elm is looking through the entire uh, uh, exposed values of math, and it's recommending things when we make typos, math.subtract. Uh, math.add. So high level idea uh, is we can make modules, we can decide what we want to expose, 
Uh, we can call out the specific values that we want to be shared by name, or we can use dot dot to say, hey, expose everything. This is kind of like the spread operator in JavaScript, but it says uh, I should be able to access math add, I should be able to access math.subtract, and if I give it you know, the arguments it needs, it should be able to run that code for me. So that's how modules work um, within, you know, if I make a, a file and I want to use them from the terminal. But how do they work if I have two files and I want one to import the other? Well, let's make kind of a, uh, let's make a main file here. And this will be like the entry point to our application. We're going to call this main. And we're going to give it a main function and we're going to import math over here. And, uh, you know, um, let's just do module main. Uh, let's call this, uh, just say we expose everything. We're not going to worry about what we expose for main right now, uh, but we're going to say a hundred is math.add 50 and 50. So as I save that, uh, I can import main and main dot hundred was able to access the math module. So by importing math, I have access to math.add. If I delete this import, you'll see that it doesn't know what math.add is. So if I try to import main, I get this issue when I try it, when it comes time to actually run the main program. It says, I can't find a math.add variable. Um, so by importing math, we're able to uh, use it with this math.prefix. Uh, and then there's two other things we can do. We can say math, as m so what as m does is it creates an alias so let's say we're using a bunch of functions and we don't want to type it every time so we want to say m dot subtract you know 20 30 that kind of thing this uh, allows us to alias our imports to potentially save some typing uh, that's the most common usage so if you have a really long module that's like you know mathematics dot whatever dot whatever dot whatever you can just say as math and then you don't have to type that huge crazy prefix everywhere in your code um, there's another thing you can do uh, which is if you have a variable that you use a lot let's uh, let's go back to just using math here let's get rid of this alias is you can just expose that function so by saying exposing add i don't need to call um I don't need to use the math.add prefix. Before we had to do this, now that I've exposed this from my import, I'm gonna be able to um, just access it right away. So here I'm still able to do add on 50 and 10, and it's getting the add function from math. Keep in mind, if we got rid of this exposing, this would not be valid because it doesn't know where add comes from, um, and we would need to use the prefix. Um, so that's a high level introduction of modules. Uh, you can create as many modules as you like. Uh, you can control what values you expose using this. So this exposes 100. This exposes every single value that you might add, every single function, every single variable, all that stuff. Um, and it allows other modules to import it. Um, so I'm going to leave main just like that. Uh, and then here, if you only want to export some stuff, you can do it like that. So that's pretty much how modules work. Um, let's take a look uh, in the next video. We're going to take a look at uh, custom types, uh, which is really where Elm shines. It's, I think, the first thing that uh, I'm really, really, really excited to share with you guys because it's something we don't have access to in JavaScript. Uh, that's kind of a game changer. So I'll see you in that video.